Dear God, thank you for this time we are going to spend with you. Give us wisdom and help us to understand and to follow your word. And bless Auntie Josephine to share your word with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, thank you, Jesus. I think this week we learned many important basics, right? Yeah. So, but please go and listen to those teachings again. See what is grace, what is mercy, what is redemption. What is, learn all those uh, basics. Okay. Okay. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, let's go. Let's go to, again, to the same verse. Can you tell me which verse is that? Can you tell me which verse is that? Ah, you know, you know, you know, don't put, don't put. Remove, okay. remove. Let me see. I think it's Ephesians 2 8. Jahaya. Okay, Ephesians 2 8. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Enoch, you can put the scripture. Okay. For by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not your own doing it is the gift of God. Not the result of works so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us. For we are what he has made us. Means what? We are not based on what we have done but we are what he has made us. Created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand to be a way of life. Okay, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Can you put that 10th verse in compare, please? Okay. For we are his workmanship. Now, when we receive salvation, we become born again, right? Did we learn it yesterday? Yes. We become a brand new creature. Did we see that also? New creature? Yes. yes. And this new creature, this being born again, is not based on what I do or you do. It is, it is he who has made us. He, he is the one who recreated us. That is what this verse says. For we are his workmanship. Now, yesterday I was asking you, what is the meaning of workmanship? For example... If you do painting or some artwork, that's your work, right? It is your artwork. It is you who do the painting or some, some of you might have some other craft work. Many, many children will have different, different interests, right? So it is your, your handwork. It is you who do it, right? And then you show your friends, you show anybody who guest comes, you will show them and say, see, this is what I do. In the same way, for... We are, just like how you do the artwork, in the same way, when we become born again, we are God's workmanship. Okay? His own masterwork, a work of art, created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, ready to be used for good works. Now we will learn all this, okay, slowly, but 
step by step we will learn even if you feel like you do not you do, you're not understanding no problem as we learn you will understand for good works which god prepared for us beforehand taking path which he set so that we would walk in them living the good lives which he rearranged and made ready for us okay now before we received salvation okay and after we receive salvation when we are saved when we are born again we become a brand new creature when we become a brand new creature it is god who has you know uh, recreated our spirit completely that now he has put the ability in us to walk in love to forgive that's what this word says for good works have you heard this i cannot forgive this person have you heard there is a limit correct i am only a human how can uh, how much time can i forgive have you heard now our love says god our love our forgiveness we doing good works is not with our own strength when we become born again we become a new creature and god put supernaturally his spirit in us his love in us his power in us his ability in us so that we can live a supernatural life we can walk in love we can forgive we can do everything we can heal the sick everything that christ has given to us okay now before we go and learn all these things what i told you we will go and learn what happens when we become a new creature are you ready to learn yes yes am i, am I confusing you yes no. am i confusing you no are you, are, are you understanding yes anna i think your internet is weak okay are you understanding yes yes go yes. yes. ahead let me see yeah okay let's go to 2 corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 okay let me ask a question before i go here how does a person receive salvation can i say you not know jahaya no daria just hold on i will i will anybody else by confessing by grace come up. through faith by, by grace, grace through faith okay by grace through faith okay there is one more step we learned yesterday shall i give a clue romans chapter 10 yeah by meditating by meditating no the word is there in our lips and heart ah who said that elinor okay believing in my heart and confessing with my yes. mouth okay. that jesus christ is lord and god raised him from the dead did we see that okay uh, put that scripture again 
Romans uh, 10, 9. Okay. So if you shall confess, uh, put uh, put an RSV, you know. Okay. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. How, how do you, how are you, how will you be saved? When you believe in your heart and confess with your, in your lips. With your, with your mouth. Correct? With your lips. Correct? So are we saved by the good works that we do? Or we are saved by believing in what Jesus did for us on the cross? Believing in what Jesus did for us. Yes. Is this grace available only for us? Or is it available for everybody, every human in this world? Every for every everyone. human in this world. Jesus died for everybody's sin, correct? But yes. for them to receive salvation, they have to believe in their heart and confess with their mouth. Are you understanding? Yes. What happens the moment a person believes in the heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and confesses it with his mouth that God has raised him from the dead? What happens? He is saved. He is not saved. Only, he is not only saved, born again. he becomes a born again new, new creature. Correct? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Now come to 2, uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17. Rihanna, you want to ask something? Okay. Uh, no, sorry. Mistake. Okay, okay. No problem. 2 Corinthians 5.17. You know? Okay. Okay. Now see this. So, if anyone is in Christ, how many of you are in Christ? All those who believe in Jesus, all those who have received salvation, all those who are born again are where? In Christ. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old will be passed away and everything will become new. Passed away. Jehaya, hold on. I made a big mistake. Did anyone found? <laughs> I, I, that's why. That's why. Pay attention, okay? So, if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old will pass away. Has passed See, away. Everything will become new. Has passed away. Has become new. Has. Okay. Has, passed has, passed away. Away. has passed away. Has passed away. Okay. Now, this scripture doesn't look like it's truth. It looks like, come on, how can the scripture say everything old has passed away when I can see some weakness, when I can see, we all have some weakness, right? After, after receiving Jesus, do we still commit sin? Do we still have weakness? Yes, but this scripture says, when you are in Christ, you become a new creature. 
and everything it doesn't say something the scripture says everything old has passed away that means everything old for example if you uh, had problem in max before if you had memory problem before after you are born again that is gone if you are fat before after you are born again the old fat is gone is it correct is it correct no it is not we are the same right even after believing and accepting jesus okay do we do we see the same weakness in us yes then why does the scripture say that when i am in christ i am a new creature or a new creation everything it doesn't say something it says everything old has passed away and see not something but everything has become new why the scripture is not supposed to say everything the scripture has to say something has become has passed old has passed away and some things have become new but this scripture says everything old has passed away and everything has become new why does the scripture say so can anybody say mariana you know because jesus died for us on the cross already so everything old went away from you and everything has become new no then why the scripture say so okay here it is telling that our old life was passed away now we live in christ means jesus is nature is inside us now okay okay good not bad we gave almost right answer okay i think children are picking up fast <laughs> okay now see this we are going to learn something very very important okay i want you to pay attention if you don't understand please ask and what we are going to learn today we will learn it i don't know if uh, listen comes he can also continue uh, however the holy spirit leads okay now see this um put 1 thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23 1 1 Thess- Thessalonians chapter 5 verse Okay now see this may the god of peace himself sanctify you entirely and may your spirit soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our lord Jesus Christ now here are, here are three things we are of three that is spirit soul and body we are of three okay let me ask a question do we have a spirit yes no okay no who said no jahaya jahaya i when i ask you you tell me okay no yes. no who said now no brian why you said no brian we have a spirit who said how can i not able to find who said joshua do we have a spirit yeah we have a spirit okay ria do we have a spirit i'm sorry the current had gone so i couldn't hear anything 
Okay. So go on the YouTube and listen to the teaching okay. again. Okay. 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 Now answer this question. Do we have a spirit? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now all those who said yes, we yes. don't. Who's that? Ina. Okay. Can I say the answer? Okay, Jehaya. We don't have a spirit. We are a spirit. Okay, Enoch. We don't have a spirit, but we are are a spirit. We are a spirit. Okay. Now remember, see this. Pay attention. Okay. We don't have a spirit. We are spirit. I am a spirit. You are a spirit. Okay. You are a spirit. You possess a soul, and you live in a physical body. I'll go slow, okay? God is spirit. The demons are spirit. The angels are spirit, and we are spirit. For example, I'll give an example. There is a man called A, okay? A man called A. Now, when the man, the man died, the man A died, and you went for the funeral, okay? So, now they, have, you see, the they are bringing his coffin. Will you say Mr. A is coming or will you say Mr. A's body is coming? Mr. A's body is coming. Mr. A's body is coming. He's coming. That means it is not Mr. A, that is Mr. A's body. Correct? Yes. Because the name Mr. A is for the spirit. When the spirit left the body, you don't you no longer call that person by name. You call this person's body. Are you understanding? Because that person yes. is a spirit. So we all are spirit and we live in a physical body. The day our spirit and our soul leaves our body, this body will never function anymore. Did you understand? Yes. yes. If yes, nod your head. Really? Okay. So we are spirit. We possess a soul. And we live in this physical body. It's a house where we stay. But the day the spirit leaves the body, the body will not function because the real person is the spirit, not the body. Correct? It is the body is only a house where my spirit dwells. Now, what did we see in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23? We saw that we are spirit, soul, and body we are of three part being we are a spirit and this spirit has a soul and this spirit and a soul lives in a physical body i'll repeat again okay you can write down so that you will not forget this okay we are spirit being we are spirit beings. We are spirit beings possessing a soul. Possessing a soul. P-O-S-S-E-S-S-I-N-G. -S -S possessing a soul. We are spirit beings possessing a soul. And living in a physical body.
Did you understand? Did you write that? Should I repeat again? We are spirit beings possessing a soul and living in a physical body. Okay. Now, we saw in 2 Corinthians 5.17, anyone who is in Christ becomes a new creation. Correct? Everything old has gone and everything has become new. Did we see? Yes. This, again, I'll repeat what I said. We saw in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Those who are in Christ, they are a new creature, a new creation. And everything that is old has passed away and everything has become new. Did we see that? Put that in, let them see the scripture. 2 Corinthians 5.17. You know, once you understand this, I tell you, your life will not be the same. After, if you ask me, when did I start seeing supernatural results, supernatural manifestation, is when I started to understand my identity, who I am really in Christ. We all our new creation, God has made us brand new person. Our spirits have become completely new. We have the spirit of God residing on the inside of us. But there, if we understand what we are going to learn now, what is the Holy Spirit going to teach us now? When you understand, you will understand why is that in spite of I am born again, I am a new creature, I have God's spirit in me. Why is that I still struggle? Why is that I still sin? Why is that there is still weakness in my life? And this understanding will help you to overcome your weakness. It will help you to tap into the spirit of God who is inside of you. There is the spirit of God. He is inside of you. Okay, I will show you the scriptures. Everything you will learn from the scriptures. Okay. Okay, Noah, you want to ask something? If you're asking anything only related to what we are learning, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what is the soul? Yeah, I have not yet started. No, I've just explained it. I have only given you what is uh, spirit, soul, body. We will learn about it. Okay. Okay. Now see this. So if anyone is in Christ, I tell you, please understand this. After you understand this and you start practicing, your life will not be natural. Your life will be 100% supernatural. Okay? Okay. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. Not will become, has become. It's done already. It was not will be passed away, has passed away. Now, this is talking about we are a spirit, we possess a soul, we live in a physical body. Now, when we born again, we become new creature. Everything old is passed away. Everything becomes, becomes new. This is only speaking about our spirit part. When a person receives salvation, when a person becomes a born again, when a person becomes a new creation, born from above, new creation, only the spirit part of that person becomes new. So when you read the scripture, 2 Corinthians 5.18, it's not talking about your soul. It's not talking about your physical body. It speaks about your spirit. The day we are born again, 
in our spirit, we become a brand new creature and everything that is old is passed away and everything becomes instantly new. We become a brand new creature. We have a, a spirit that is connected with God. We have a spirit where the Holy Spirit and our spirit becomes one spirit. Did you understand? So the new creation is not in our soul, but it is in the spirit. Okay, now let's see what is spirit, the soul, and this body. Okay. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Remove the, remove the scripture, you know. Okay. Now, as I already told you, we are spirit and our spirit has, our spirit possesses a soul and our spirit and our soul lives in a physical body. There's one more scripture that talks about the spirit and the soul that is um, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says, the word of God divides the soul and the spirit. In other way, only through the word of God, we can understand the difference between the spirit and the soul. Uh, I'll show you that scripture. Hebrews 4.12. Put that, you know. Hebrews 4.12. 12. Yeah, now see this. Indeed, the word of God is living. We already we have seen the scripture before, okay? Indeed, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. See this. Piercing until it divides soul from spirit. That means... The only way that we can understand the difference between the soul and the spirit is through the word of God. Otherwise, the spirit and the soul is very identic identical. But the Bible says very clearly about spirit, soul, body. The world will say only body and soul. But the Bible says spirit soul body i showed you in 1 thessalonians 5 23 the bible very clearly says spirit soul body and in hebrews 4 12 we see that piercing until it divides soul from the spirit so we have we are a spirit and we possess a soul and we live in a physical body and the only way to see the division or the difference between the spirit and the soul is only through the word of god Okay, okay, remove the scripture. Did you understand till here? If yes, yes not yet. Yes. yes. Is there anybody who did not understand? Joshua, you understood? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, now, first let's see uh, what is the spirit and soul and body okay now we all know about our physical body correct we can see can i touch a person's body can i touch you yes I, if i if i touch you can you feel yes yeah. that person you can feel now can i touch your soul can i say no no, no. jahaya no enoch no yeah, Joanna. You can't touch your soul. No. No. Okay. Anybody else? No. Yes, by word. No. Who said? Eleanor. Who's that? Eleanor. No. Ah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. Wow, good. Say that again. We can touch our soul by words. Exactly. Now, remember, in your soul is your 
feelings, your emotions, your feelings, your emotions, your choosing, your personality, all these are in your soul. Your thinking, your choosing, your feeling, all this is in your soul, your mind. Your, your mind, your mind is in your soul. Now, many times we think our brain is controlling our mind. How many times you thought like that? Your brain controls your mind. Ah, it is not like that. Your brain doesn't control your mind. Your mind is what controls your brain. It is the other way. I'll give a small example, okay, small example. You have seen a smartphone? Yes. Yes. Now, are there softwares in the soft in the in the in the smartphone? Yes. Yeah. You can yes. send email, you can take pictures, you can buy things online, you can WhatsApp, you can do video call, you can come on Zoom. Correct? Now, all these applications. Now, for example, I take a the application WhatsApp. Will WhatsApp itself will decide I have to call so and so and call or message so and so and message? No. The software has that system where you can use it to call or to do video call or to message. Correct? In the same way, our brain is just like the software. It is our mind that controls our brain. Are you understanding? Yes. Yes, no. Yes. Just like how yes. it is the brain, the body is a different organ. It is a physical organ. The mind is a spiritual organ. Now, when I say physical, let me give you the difference. What is the difference between the physical and the spiritual. What is the difference? We have learned this already. What is the difference between the physical and the spiritual? Physical is you can touch. Yes, exactly. Physical is you can touch. Then? Spiritual is unseen. Physical is unseen. Uh, spiritual is unseen. Very good. Physical is something that, ha that can be, that I can touch, that I can see that I can, that I have physical evidence. But spiritual are the unseen, they are real, but they don't have physical evidence. Ethan, you want to ask something? Uh, no, I just wanted to answer. Okay, but are you understanding? Yes. Yes, good. I know uh, some people might say children don't understand, but I don't agree with that. You know why? Because nobody can understand the Bible truths which are human intellectual. It is not about intelligence. It's about the anointing. Okay? It is about the anointing. It, without the anointing, nobody can understand the truths. So the Bible is not for a person who's intellectual, but a Bible can only be understood by a person through the Holy Spirit. Okay? So I believe you're all anointed, correct? And it is the Holy Spirit who's teaching you and it is who is, it is the Holy Spirit who's giving us the understanding, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay, very good. Now, what was I saying? Okay, now when I said the physical body, I can touch my body. When it comes to my soul, I can touch your soul through my words. For example, if I speak angrily, will it hurt you? Yes. Yes. Am I, now you see emotions, sad? Yes. yes. So am I touching your soul? Yes. Yes. Now, for example, if I say a joke, will you laugh? Yes. Yes. So now, what am I doing? My words touches your soul. I cannot touch. I can touch your body. 
with my physically i can touch you but remember everything that is spiritual i can get connected to the spiritual how through words so can i touch your soul yes i can touch your soul how i can touch your soul by through words words okay so in my soul is my thinking my choosing and my feeling in my soul is all that i have learned okay okay praise god thank you jesus you know um i'm not going to go further i'll stop here but we will learn what is soul and what is in our spirit okay and how god created us in the spirit what happened after man committed sin how death came and then how we are now recreated we are born again we will learn all these things maybe it might take one week i don't know however the holy spirit leads yeah listen yeah can i continue with this uh, born please, again please. tomorrow as well i already told if alistan comes and takes i'll be happy okay okay this part so please yes, come yes. continue and uh, yeah and when alistan comes and teaches you know it, it might be even more easier correct yes 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 god thank you jesus god. not only alistan but i allow that everybody comes like alistan and uh, like jesus okay not only just preaching by words but demonstration with love with with your action that's how if i you know uh, when i read the book of acts and i read the book of acts after the resurrection of jesus after they received salvation after they received the holy spirit if i see the disciples they were very bold they did not have fear of death they did not have fear of criticism they did not have any fear but they did not preach just words when they preached the dead raised when they preached the blind eyes opened when they preached the the, the crippled man got up and walked the the paralyzed got healed and if the same holy spirit is with us they don't they did not have a different holy spirit we have the same the holy spirit we have the same resurrection power we have the same word but the problem is we have we, we we did not have the truth and now the holy spirit is teaching our truth so that we also will become you know i always have a feel this is an army i don't see you like children i see you as an army and i see you all as soldiers god is raising an army and you will be going and uh, preaching the gospel not by words especially nowadays when fear is increasing sicknesses are coming they might even come even more bad things that is the time you will boldly go and speak and people will get healed do you want to live that life and do you see people crying and receiving christ the truth do you want to live a life like that yes yes great god yes thank you jesus okay so alistan will continue this tomorrow okay yeah yes okay if because if i go on next now on spirit i will not finish another 5 10 minutes it will go another it will go for a more time so i i'll stop here but then alistan will continue but whatever we learned for this week please go and try to revise the notes that you have written the definition and ask the holy spirit the holy spirit is your counselor is a teacher who teaches you okay first okay. okay. yeah sister yeah i was going to say the same thing to the children you know since we are continuing this tomorrow to please revise what we learned today because it is it is you know really uh, you know something that we need to get it implanted in our heart so that we know understand why we behave in certain ways And yes that will be very empowering to all of us so yeah. all of you please if you uh, so there is also you know if those of you who don't have time to listen to the teaching many times you can you know one time you listen it completely and the second and third time and all when you want to listen you can even increase the playback speed you know that no in youtube you have in the settings there's an option for playback speed you can increase it to maybe 1.25 or 1.5 so that the 45 minutes talk you can listen it in lesser uh, 
lesser duration okay and then keep listening to and today's teaching especially will be very important to understand tomorrow's teaching because it's it will be a continuation i was hoping that aliston would continue because then there won't be a break Break. Yeah, yes. and I was happy when Alistair came forward and said he'll continue this. Yes, yes, yeah. So see you all tomorrow. Thank you so much, Jocelyn. Yeah, thank you, thank you, sister, and thank you, everyone. Thanks, God. Uh, Sarah, are you there? No, I thought Sarah is there. Or is it Eleanor? It's Sarah. I can't see Sarah. Yeah, Sara. Then, then you do it. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I can see she has raised hand. Yeah, yeah. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, thank you, Jesus, for revealing to us more about your love and power. Thank you for creating us in your image and likeness. We believe that we are redeemed by what you have done for us on the cross. We believe that your word is active and has power. Bless Jocelyn Auntie and all her intentions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much, Sarah. Thank you, everyone. See you all tomorrow. Bye. 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 Bye.